This is the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Kendall of the notaballerina.com travel blog. Every episode, I'll share travel tales from several fellow travel lovers, and together we hope to entertain and inspire you, remind you of some of your own great travel experiences, and encourage you to hit the road again soon. And welcome to episode 207 of the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. Today we're talking about writing retreats around the world. Now, I am a big believer in travel being great for creativity for lots and lots of reasons. In fact, we have an old episode, quite old now, back in um, the early times, episode 52, about how travel sparks creativity. And I've often found that when I travel, Uh, I just have these, you know, bursts of intense creativity. Um, And in this episode, I chat with three writers who obviously agree because they have traveled to some really special places for writing retreats. In fact, we actually cover three continents between their stories. Um, It's probably a good time to confess, actually, that I'm midway through writing a book myself on, of course, the topic of thoughtful travel. And definitely while I was editing this episode, I really have got the yearning to be able to go on my own writing retreat. It might not happen. I think I'll continue to finish this book here at my desk, but one day I would really love to do something of the kind of retreats that my guests today describe. So let's start off with Suzanne Moore. She is a novelist based here in Perth, and she had, well, a clever way to create her own writing retreat. I travel a lot to Japan. Um, we are very fortunate people that we have a house up there in the mountains of Hokkaido and it is quite possibly the closest place to perfection in the world, in my opinion. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's, you know, never too hot in the summer, beautiful uh, tropical forests and amazing wildlife and national parks, mountains and rivers and lakes and volcanoes and all the things that photographers just die for. Um, and then be- incredible world-class bucket loads of snow in the winter to go snowboarding. So it is pitched perfectly to me <laughs> and my skin type and the things I love to do. So um, <laughs> I am the luckiest person alive to be able to spend so much time there. And so I obviously have been working very hard this year, um, finalising edits on my first novel. And it's hard at home. Working from home is, you know, has its challenges in that yeah. it's hard to stay motivated. You're in your own house. You're, you know, there's always washing to do, shopping to do, kids to sort out. And it's not very inspiring being at home. It's not. And, and I actually live in a really inspiring place. I mean, I'm overlooked seven acres of glorious Jarrah forest, so I can't Mm. actually complain about that either. Um, (laughs) But it's still, no matter how beautiful it is, it becomes the mundane at some point because it it is your daily life. Um, And and being able to carve out time with the demands of family can be a real challenge. Um, And so at Easter last year, my husband made this completely off-the-cuff remark that Mm. I should book a trip to Japan in September and just go by myself (laughs) and that ticket was booked within about 10 minutes. It was done, <laughs> dusted. <laughs> no chance for him to change his mind on that That's idea. Right. And, in fact, like a week later he was like, did you book that? Like it was just, <laughs> you said. <laughs> That's exactly right. I'm like, I am not letting this one go. It's too late so, now. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, um, I booked for two and a half weeks to go on my own to Japan and I was so excited because, being able to have that density of uninterrupted writing time um, mm. was unheard of in my whole life. You know, I've never had that kind of space. As the as I approached this this journey, and I was very excited, and I realised that not only have I ever had that kind of space to be creative or to work at my own pace in my entire life, I've never had that kind of space ever for anything in Just my to, entire to life. to live even. To live, yeah, that's to be, right. Yeah, alone for that long, yeah. Yeah, so I had, you know, I was a very diligent child and I went straight to university and studied very hard for five years and then met my husband, well, my then, now husband, and we were dating since we were 20 and as soon as we finished uni we moved in together and bought a house and sort of started life building Then we had children in our late 20s and Suddenly I realised I'd gone from child in my parents' house to wife in my my family home and mother and I had never, ever 
done mm. anything more than, you know, two days in Sydney or mm. a couple of days in London kind of travel. Yeah. And I'd never had that many hours ever <laughs> completely alone. Mm. And sounds glorious. And it sounds glorious, but then I had a complete panic attack about it. <laughs> Oh, no, how will I survive? <laughs> That's right because, you know, I'm, I, you know, I've said I'm a bit of a, I have an odd personality and that I kind of love to be by myself but I get very lonely very quickly. Mm-hmm. And, and so <laughs> the idea that I would have nobody to speak to because I don't speak Japanese well enough to converse with anybody yeah. and the village where we live is abandoned almost and so that time of year – Nobody's there. You know, people come up for the winter for their for their skiing holidays or mm. in the middle of summer um, for the kind of cycling season. But that shoulder period is very, very quiet. There's right. often not a single person there. So I just realised that, you know, not only was I, I was completely alone from my friends and family but also isolated from other English speakers. Mm-hmm. Um, and quite frankly, it was one of the best things I've ever done for myself. <laughs> Yes, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I discovered after about four days I almost lost my voice from not speaking, like it went all kind of <laughs> croaky. But I, I quickly fell into a really relaxed, introspective regime of walking and riding and reading and I'd have a glass of wine in the evening and, you know, watch a bit of Netflix, maybe do a, you know, short day trip somewhere. And it was so peaceful that I think I was more productive in those two weeks than I would have been in several months at home. Wow, really? Yeah, like I I was – at one point I realised I'd been riding for 10 hours and, you know, if I'm lucky to get two hours of solid riding in at home in a day. So the – Wow, 10 hours. Yeah. That's impressive. And and I wasn't wasn't fatigued um, until right towards the end. I think after about two weeks I'd really hit burnout. Mm -hmm. But – I think there's a lot to be said for sort of bursts of those that intensity um, and being outside your home and outside your country and outside your language and culture um, allows you to feel your own foreignness and see your own worldview from an outside perspective. Mm-hmm. And it sort of shapes, it, it consolidates how you feel about the world and how you feel about yourself and your family and what you see, but you also realised how fixed and rigid you are um, and how it, important it is to be yourself in another place and see yourself for what you are mm. rather than, than fitting in, you know, where everything is validating what you think and say all of the time within your own space. Yeah. Mm. So that's kind of the root of that creativity then. That. I think so, mm. yeah. And I think, mm. you know, you can certainly look at travelling as a creative practice even when you're not um, technically writing at the time. I think, and I'm sure everybody feels this way when they're away and, you know, not in their comfort space. Every time you're away from home, you are constantly having to reimagine how you see things and and see things from other people's point of view. So I think it's um, a very creative process travelling anyway and Mm. then having to do it off your own bat and having nobody to support you or nobody to take care of you just amplifies that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I completely agree. And I know I always feel much more creative when I'm traveling. I always get all the big ideas when I'm somewhere abroad. Um, You know, it just, I think for all those reasons you said, and, and sometimes, and the different stimuli and stuff, it just, it really enhances that kind of creative thinking side. And also I think because all the stuff from home drops away, so your brain's not cluttered with all the other stuff and has more space for that creative thinking. Exactly, yeah. And um, you realise very acutely that your way of living and all that that encompasses, your children, your family, your work, your house, your country, your city, is just one facet of mm-hmm. how the world works. And so it's just it's delightful, you know, mm-hmm. to kind of experience it from a different perspective, even if you're not doing something really challenging. I mean, I, I wasn't doing anything that miraculous. I was sitting in my own lounge room somewhere else yeah, with my yeah. own things, you know, <laughs> but, um, but I was looking at a different landscape. I was seeing different animals. I was having to converse in a different language when I went to the shops and, you know, everything was just that little bit harder, that little bit more challenging and I had to put more thought into it. And so what was daily and mundane and, you know, in the back of my mind, I actively had to think about it. And so I think that feeds into all that kind of creative process as well. 
Now, it's a little bit bittersweet for me listening to Susie's discussion about her self-guided writing retreat in Hokkaido because back when we recorded this chat, it was uh, pre-COVID and we actually had a plan. Susie is someone I know well here in Perth and uh, a few of us had a plan to go with Susie about this time, actually, pretty much about this week um, and have our own uh, retreat there in the in her home in Hokkaido. Oh, so I could be there right now, but for a pandemic. But I guess Hokkaido will be there next time around as well. And uh, I guess I'll be even more ready. I'll be even more of a writer, perhaps. Anyway, one day, one day. <laughs> but uh, I just love uh, Susie's approach to just really grasping that time and making the most of it. Now, my next guest today is Catherine Marshall, who got to have an even longer retreat in a really interesting and spectacular way as well. Well, I was accepted into an international writer's residency called uh, Ledig House, and it's in New York State, close to the uh, town of Omai, that's O-M-I, and (laughs) which in turn is close to uh, the town of Hudson, which is on the Hudson River. So it's a couple of hours by train north of New York City. And of course, it was very exciting. I had been to New York City before, and it's a, it's a place that I really absolutely adore, and there's always something different to do there. So I spent a couple of days there uh, b- before on en route to uh, Ledig House. Then got to Ledig House and I was there for, for four weeks. Oh, wow. A long one. Oh, it was a long one. Sounds I was amazing wa- already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's absolutely beautiful. It's set on a 300 acre farm and it consists of the main house, which would have been the farmhouse originally. And then two or three barns have been converted into writer's residences Uh and so this was where we stayed and there were people from from the US from um, the Czech Republic from Hungary Germany Catalonia Uh, so really from all over the show Denmark um, people that I kept in touch with and this was nine years ago and they were writers playwrights poets um, translators and we all would just work at our desks in our rooms during the day or uh, go for a walk, go for a bike ride. And we would all gather in the evening in the main farmhouse around a meal, uh, mm. which was always cooked for us. There was a cook who would come in every day. On the weekends, we would have um, people from the publishing industry would come up to the house, to the farm and and spend the weekend there. So we had access oh. to them and conversation with them and of course, as you can imagine, there was a lot of discussion about ideas and writing and uh, philosophy and that type of thing. There was also an art park, really, uh, adjacent to this farm. It was a, a large parkland area with oversized sculptures. And so it was also enjoyable just to sort of meander about this artwork, uh, you know, when, when one had writer's block. <laughs> oh, um, did the group? How many were? How many people were there? And did you all come at once, like for the same four week block, or how did that work? We more or less overlapped, and I'm, I think there were probably about ten or twelve of us. Oh, wow, great! And uh, yeah, so so more or less overlapped, which was really nice, and I suppose that was one of the reasons we formed quite strong bonds. One of them, one of the fellow writers on that retreat actually came to Australia a few years later and um, she was a guest of the Adelaide Writers Festival and so I actually travelled to Adelaide to attend the festival and we were able to spend some time together. She's from Nigeria originally but uh, now lives in in Belgium. So yes, we did form some rather strong bonds. Um, we another interesting thing we did actually in the midst of the of the residency was we travelled down to New York City one evening and we we did a public reading in a in a Ooh. pub in a bar. <laughs> wow, sounds um, scary. So it was very scary. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but it was pretty exhilarating, you know, once we'd done it and, and the bar was packed. Um, and See, that's uh, New York. I mean, I don't think there's a yes. really good spot like that to go in Perth, but I imagine in New York City there's probably dozens. Oh, for sure. It was it was in the East Village, if I remember correctly, and we then went out afterwards and had dinner. So that was really memorable. Do you think it was important that you were away from, I mean, I'm assuming that you managed to write well, because you would. Um, <laughs> was, it, was it helpful to be away from home? Was it helpful to be in an amazing setting? Was it the people? Like what kind of aspects helped make it, helped make it a good writer's retreat? That's a really interesting question because I'm actually currently uh, doing a bit of a, a writing retreat at home um, and trying to emulate those uh, characteristics and of course at a at a self-directed retreat um, in one's own home you, that what you miss out on is the camaraderie and the conversation and the uh, inspiration that you get from fellow creatives and I think that probably is what I really took away from that experience was the people I met and getting having a bit of space from your regular environment is also helpful, but I think as writers, we have to be able to write wherever we are. Mm, mm, mm. But and having that group of international people, like, you know, such an interesting mix of people, I think yeah. would be super inspiring. It really was. It really was. And just, you know, developing new friendships and friendships with people who are engaged in the same sort of work as oneself is, is a really useful thing to do. Already just being somewhere near New York City is the right kind of atmosphere for me. I always remember on my, so far, only one trip to New York is sitting in coffee shops and not once but twice I heard uh, writers discussing things at tables nearby. It just seems like a place that uh, that draws in creative people from all around the world. And I've longed to go back there and spend like some months um kind of soaking up the New York City way of life one day. So, um, but I think on top of that, Catherine's description of being in a group of people from so many different countries really grabs me as a, you know, a fantastically inspiring way to spend a month. So I can see why she enjoyed that and uh, gained a lot of inspiration from it. Now, my final guest today is Patty Buff, who is an American writer living in Germany. And uh, she got to not only attend a writer's retreat, but in fact, organize it. And it sounded amazing. The first one was um, organized through uh, an organization known as the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, um, short form SCBWI. And it's a worldwide organization um, that focuses on um, strictly on children's literature, which was what I was writing at the time. I was lucky enough to actually be the regional advisor for mm -hmm. this organization for Germany and Austria. Cool. And so this is something that I wanted. And so I wanted to do like a, a writing retreat. And so I was lucky enough to be able to organize it. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it, really, it really, really was. It was um, a dream come true. And so what I I did was um, because as uh, I told you before I live in a very picturesque area just north of the Alps in Germany between Munich and Salzburg and we have this huge lake called um, Chiemsee in German um, Lake Chiem and in the middle of this lake are two islands now the smaller island of, of this pair is um, called the Frauenninsel which is the female island and on this island is still a running convent um, of Benedictine nuns. Um, so it's Catholic religion convent and it's still in existence. And I thought this would be a perfect setting mm. for a writing retreat. It was over an, an entire weekend. So Friday evening until Sunday morning. And um, you have to take a ferry out to the island and that's it. You're there for hmm. the whole weekend. Cool. And we were lucky enough um, to be able to use the convent facilities. And so we were staying in um, the kind of retreat area that they have there. They have set up conference rooms and oh, um, wow. dorm rooms, basically, for their guests. 
And so, yeah, we had this um, retreat. We had about maybe 10 or 11 people there, uh, mostly um, women, but we did have one lone man. <laughs> he was allowed to come there. onto the Frauen Insel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coming out to the Frauen Insel. And um, yeah, and it was just a fantastic experience. Oh, so. wow. Did you have any, I mean, did you have a formal kind of program over the weekend or were you mostly we riding did. on your own we, or how did it work? We did. We. I brought in, um, I flew over an editor of children's um, books cool. and she's also, she at that time, she wasn't actively working for a publication or for a publisher, but she was working um, in coordination with them. I flew her over and she gave us a, a series of workshops and she also did um, like a critique oh, then. And excellent. she met with each each participant um, individually to discuss their work wow, and cool. to help them, you know, of course, with that goal of getting published. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that sounds perfect. Um, and so I am assuming if this was me, I would feel very inspired by being in this kind of unusual place. Is that what happened? Yes, yes. You know, and the evening is when that inspiration really kind of came out. And after the full day program on on um, Saturday, we all got together. We opened up a bottle of wine, and um, and we did we did like kind of tag team storytelling. Oh, cool! And it was very it was oral. Nobody wrote it down, but we just came out with this fantastic story of um, mermaids living in the in the sea in the lake, and um, and just. You know, oh. our fantasies just went completely wild. Because <laughs> you're out there in this unusual place, which is like then a perfect setting to start you off. Exactly. And, oh, exactly. And, wow. and, you know, we have this, the mountains in the backdrop, oh. you know, and we could see like the town lights twinkling on the shoreline and these big, huge, imposing mountains behind oh. them. And it was just, it was fantastic. It really, really was. And um, everybody who was there said that, you know, due to the location and also, of course, to the formal workshops, um, that they were much more inspired to go out and to complete their work and to, you know, make it better and to put it out and try to get it published. Yeah, so, oh, I bet that sounds amazing. Huge, oh. yeah. The, the backdrop yeah. of big mountains is so inspiring to me. You know, here I am in Western Australia. We have no big mountains at all. But, you know, whenever I'm in Europe and I get to see those amazing views and, oh, it's just, yeah, it really just lights me up. I know that it sparks creativity. So, yeah, that sounds Definitely. like a perfect location for a, a writing retreat. So, yeah. Yeah, it was. It oh, was. Amazing. Patty went on to tell me about a second retreat she attended, uh, this one she didn't even have to organise, which is better, I think, even, um, and it was held in a wellness resort and also extremely productive. So ah, lots of fabulous ways to get that uh, writing happening at writing retreats around the world. One day I will do one of those. I'm sure of it. So uh, thank you very much for listening to episode 207 of the Thoughtful Travel podcast. I want to tell you a little bit more about my guests. So first up, I chatted with Susie or Suzanne Moore. You can find info about her at SuzanneMooreWriter.com. And I'll leave a link in the show notes to her recent novel, The Place Between. Next up, we chatted with Catherine Marshall. Her website is coming soon at catherinemarshall.com.au. And in the meantime, she has uh, a website with some friends at timetowander.com.au. Uh, I'm also going to leave a link in the show notes to the um, Art Oh My uh, uh, area, which she referenced or where she actually you know, got to care at her retreat because at this um, Art Oh My place, uh, you can visit as just a, as a visitor, as a tourist. Uh, there's a, like this massive sculpture park and all sorts of really interesting stuff there. So, um, and last but definitely not least, I chatted with Patty Buff, and you can find out about um, Patty's writing at pattybuff.wordpress.com. I'm also leaving a link in the show notes to episode 52 about how travel sparks creativity because I think that's particularly relevant. Uh, as always, don't forget to come and join our Facebook group for Thoughtful Travellers. Just search for Thoughtful Travellers in Facebook or uh, click through the link in the show notes. And for this episode, the show notes are at notaballerina.com slash 207. As always, thank you so much for listening. Thank you. 
this has been another episode of the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. Show notes and other information are at notaballerina.com slash podcast. Join me again soon for another chat about why we travel. Bye for now. Thank you.